Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Ayashar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Ayashar, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're listening to this to our audio platform, please give us a five-star rating, and please download this episode and more episodes. Now, because this is the severity of our hot of these topics, it involves mental health. If you or someone you know that is dealing with mental health, please go visit mentalhealthhotline.org. It's mentalhealthhotline.org. And if you or anyone you know is suffering from life-threatening mental health issues, go please call 988, once again, 988. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, I want to welcome one of my favorite YouTubers to, as my latest guest. He's a commentator and storyteller. His main channel has over 1.3 million YouTube subscribers, including me. As of this recording, has over 74,800 Instagram followers and 571,000 Facebook followers. And he's also the host of the Let's Get Into It podcast. So please help me welcome Slayer to the podcast. Thank you for having me. When you put it like that, I'm like, okay, we've got a roster here. But yeah, um, thank you for consuming the content. And I love what I do. So I'm glad that other people love it too. So you are phenomenal about this. And I and you have played a big role in, infl- in, play, in covering some of the biggest stories in entertainment news. So before we get into that... Let's talk about when did you get interested in pop culture and how did that passion evolve and desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? So, you know, I grew up in a house that had a ton of magazines everywhere, Us Weekly, every kind of gossip magazine you could imagine with the most wild headlines. So as a young kid, I was captivated by this. I didn't have a lot of television I was allowed to watch, but, you know, I could steal my mom's magazine. So I started paying attention to those stories. And then my passion with pop culture only grew and I started to see it as not only entertainment, but also kind of like a reflection of our society. I mean, even if you look back to some of those old magazines that I grew up uh, reading, some of the things they would print back then are wild. So I feel like, you know, pop culture has a powerful place when it comes to its influence on society and public opinion. So as I got older, I realized I wanted to be part of the narrative and I wanted to help break down these stories and uncover the headlines. And, you know, especially at where I am in my career, it's wild to see how manufactured things could be. So I just try to operate with honesty and to really get to the bottom of it. Because when you get to the true stories, they are wild and entertaining and fun. And it's been a blast. I totally agree with you on that, Batslam, because you do a phenomenal job in this half of the 2020s. Oh boy, the entertainment. We have so many memorable and so many shocking stories. So what I want to, I, we have little time, but however, I want to make sure we cover the biggest four out of the second so far. And we've got to start talking about the free Britney movement, because when I was listening, when I was co- following this, I was so shocked But you were one of the main people that was co- that's been covering from start to present day. You know what? It's so interesting to look back because a lot of the stories I covered as kind of like niche topics ended up becoming bigger things like the Dan Schneider, the Britney Spears. And I was fascinated by the free Britney movement, because when I heard it, nobody was talking about it. It was kind of conspiracy theory. But when I really looked at the information, it highlighted the intersection between celebrity, mental health, legal proceedings. And it also showed us that um, having fan pressure, having public knowledge out there can influence legal proceedings and can change someone's life. So um, I started covering, I think it was in 2019, um, pretty story. And then I caught the attention of one of her former managers, Sam Lefty. And I looked at my PayPal one day, had a hundred dollar tip with his phone number and he wanted me to reach out. I guess that was his way of trying to get to me and to get my attention. And it did. And I ended up uh, working with him for some time to really uncover and dissect the idea that this was a conspiracy. And it led to me getting a bunch of uh, cease and desist letters from her uh, entertainment firm and really threw me into the center of it all. And I'm so grateful for what we've done and what we've been able to advocate for and create space for other celebrities like Amanda Bynes and several others who find themselves taken advantage by the probate court and by their own family. I agree, totally agree, and I always love Britney. I always admired Britney, so it was great to do that. But then there were some people that disappoint me the most, and one of the biggest disappointments was Ellen DeGeneres' downfall from Grace, including the end of her talk show, and also you've been, you covered the scandal, and like you've had multiple hours of videos, and I was reviewing some of your videos before we got on this call. Yeah, you know, um, 
obviously I could never compare myself to Ellen, but I think sometimes when it comes to my own success, it's because of my authenticity, my genuineness. I truly care about these stories. It's not um, a facade. And we've seen time and time again, not only Ellen being called out by her own employees, but people on her own show, her own guests talking to her about you know Taylor Swift and Zac Efron singing to her about how they're so uncomfortable every time they come on. And um, Dakota Johnson calling her out for saying that she didn't invite her to her birthday. And there's so many instances where we kind of started to see the cracks form. And I think nowadays when it comes to the James Gordons, the Ellen DeGeneres, people are craving that authentic, bold coverage that like Wendy Williams would give us. And that's, you know, we're missing that from, uh, the media. So I think as far as Ellen, she kind of like pitted her own path, but um, I think it also speaks to how social media and giving other people voices is kind of deconstructing this facade, the manufactured entertainment. We're starting to hear what these people are really like. And do you really want to support someone who behaves like Ellen? No. I agree. It was definitely disappointing from her behavior and everything going on. I'm speaking of disappointing we got one of the biggest stories that we talked that caught dominated the headlines in the entertainment industry this year was the quiet onset documentary, which revealed the dark side of Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider productions that range from all of that, the Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, iCarly, Victorious and Sam and Cat. It was definitely very hard to cut see, and but you've been doing but before that even documentary was unleashed onto Discovery, you've been one of the people at the ground forefront of this. Yeah, and it's incredible to me because I I am such a big part of this world and I didn't grow up necessarily watching these shows. I saw them in passing, but I wasn't big into television. So then growing up and then starting to get into these stories, you know, a lot of my coverage is based on what my community wants. They reach out to me, they give me tips and I was tipped off to go and cover this. And it ended up becoming my most viewed video about Dan Schneider and exposing what he was doing at Nickelodeon years prior and even exposing, um, the situation involving Drake Bell and Brian Peck, which was revealed on Quiet On Set. I mean, I made that public in 2021 on my channel. So um, it, it was a really validating moment to not only be in the doc. I was briefly in the doc in the beginning, but I in August 2022, I was actually working with the creators of the documentary because they did see my work and they saw the worth of it on YouTube enough to where they wanted to you know, garner information from me so that they could put out a documentary like this. And I think that it's so powerful because now so many more people who are beyond YouTube and my channel are aware of the circumstances some child stars have lived through. And it's going to be very interesting because there's still one more episode and not the plans that's a little drop, but I think you're, I'm very, I'm very interested and also it's going to be very heartbreaking to watch an episode. Yeah, I mean, and I think right now they are in a tricky spot because Dan Schneider is trying to sue them for defamation, trying to get certain parts removed, trying to get the documentary removed in general. So they're in a tricky spot. And, you know, that's unfortunately the cons of like what I do and what these documentaries do and what advocate advocacy movements do because they expose what they don't want exposed. So, um, of course, I'm going to stand by them, but I'm looking forward to seeing that next episode as well. And speaking of being exposed, um, mm -hmm. another big another big story that happened was the downfall of Sean Disgrace Music Mogul Sean Diddy Combs, and you've been covering it for since the arrest, and it is so amazing how this big web of what of what disgusting stuff he allegedly has done over the years, and now and how he's almost connected to a lot of major players in the industry. I'm actually really excited that the federal government is getting involved because essentially Cassie put forward some really damning accusations. And um, since there was the statute of limitations, it's not like she could pursue anything. Granted, they settled a day after, but the state saw these alleged crimes. And when the state sees a case of like domestic violence like this, they can take it into their own hands to then, you know, explore it, charge them with it, but also then look into further things. And I think now that we are really talking about Diddy and a lot of people are coming forward, I've been able to go back on some things like my old Kim Porter videos and old Diddy coverage and be able to piece things back together in even a better way. I've done some recent podcast episodes, which um, I think now seeing a lot of the recent interviews from his staff and um, even some of the conspiracies online, putting it all together, it's really painting a wild picture of what this can become. And I'm hoping that the federal investigation, you know, is 
it's like genuine and just, you know they don't bypass because we see so many celebrities get an easy off and i think that's why i'm so genuinely surprised to see diddy in this position because i feel like up until now we or really the me too movement a lot of celebrities have been untouchable so this is his downfall and i am here for it and even here to hear, like learn more about other stories like the male escort that he had hired in florida who randomly disappeared and passed away just has gone so i think there's so much more that can come out about him and i'm staying on top of it because i i don't know what they're going to release what they're going to hold back but there's definitely going to be some information slipping through the cracks and sloan we're going i'm going to keep all my eyes on you and i believe my and i believe my subscribers and your followers are going to keep an eye on you on as well so we got to move past these heavy hot topics and talk about some things that i really admire about you and i admire about your brand building it's amazing how much 1.3 million YouTube spot, YouTube subscribers is no laughing matter. So what have been some of the challenges that you faced building those, building your brand and how have you overcome those obstacles? We know um, it's interesting because I wasn't going into it as building a brand, but, it, you know, it's become one. And I try to operate with honesty and, uh, you know, integrity and trying to put out really factual information, but also trying to stand out in a crowded space of reporters and news networks and, you know, play uh, entities that have a lot of money and funding and they could push certain stories. And really it's just here, me on my own. And I think that's what people have appreciated from the jump um, that it's consistent content that has been able to build credibility to where now when people come up to me in public, they're like, you know, well, you're part of my morning routine every day I get ready and I'm a part of their lives. And that to me is such an honor and, such a highlight of this entire career. So, you know, every influencer person in this kind of position, they're going to have the negative feedback, the criticism. I try to look at valid criticism as a way to grow because my channel is a reflection of not only me, but my community. But um, nonetheless, I've had so much support online. So it's definitely helped with the dark side of social media. And I feel really happy with the space I've been able to create. And you've created a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be looking at you mm -hmm. and next generation, once they're old enough and once they're ready, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to say, Sloan Hooks inspired me. I hope so. I'm like, I feel like I, I, you know, I had a full other career. I worked in the government. I studied statistics. I had a whole other life. And this has been just such a blessing. And I even like I have a lot of TikToker friends here in L.A. that I love giving them advice on their long form content or even just business aspects that I wish I knew back when I first started. So I, I love to be like a helpful hand. And also um, this year, you know, there's going to be a lot of collaborations and things like that. So it's going to be cool to see me in different formats and with other creators and kind of all supporting each other. We all have to support each other because if the mm -hmm. thing is we don't support each other, who's going to be there for us? Absolutely. All righty. So I want to talk to you about, you started a second channel, your podcast, Let's Get Into It. So why did you decide it was time to start a podcast and also a second YouTube channel? Yeah, so this, um, I mean, this podcast allows me to explore different formats like interviews and discussions. And sometimes there are topics that I don't want to bring to my main channel because, you know, my main channel is is a business. Ultimately, it's um, we put out a certain amount of videos every week. There are a certain format and I don't want to have any surprises. I don't want to interview just to show up one day and just completely kick the algorithm. So I did feel a calling to get on the ground and to have guests on and to um interview controversial people and kind of hear them out and hear their side of the story because I feel like a rational figure on social media to where I can speak to some of these people. So it became a place for me to have a little bit more creative freedom. Since then, I haven't done as many interviews as I did beginning uh, of, in the beginning of the podcast, but um, it's still a, it's it's a slightly different like program than my main channel. Um, and, you know, I just love being out there and putting out content. And if I could just keep posting and posting and posting, I would. So the podcast now gives me another way. And that's amazing. What I love about your podcast, though, is basically you've been able to welcome a lot of people into it. Um, two of the names that remind me that that I liked was your, I loved your conversation with Lexa Nichols and, of course, Ollie London. So who have been some of your most memorable chats and why did they stand out? 
I love how you bring up Ollie London because he is so niche, but he was so kind. And um, we had a really great conversation. I mean, some of the guests that stand out to me would be, I mean, Holly Madison is someone who I saw growing up on television uh, every night because my parents would put on the, you know, Girls Next Door show and I wasn't really watching TV, so I got to watch what they watched. So um, I grew up watching her on the screen and having a conversation with her just felt unreal because I you know, I still kind of have that experience where like celebrities don't even fully feel real sometimes. So having a conversation with someone who I've known for uh, over a decade of my life was incredible. And to hear about her experiences at the mansion, it's such a dark tale and something that's so LA, so classic Hollywood to have this older man who owns this magazine to have all these young women and to kind of facilitate this toxic environment was so interesting to hear more about. I also really enjoyed talking to America's Next Top Model winner, Lisa D'Amato. She had such good energy and she also had just like such a crazy story when it came to reality television, her time with on the show and dealing with Tyra Banks, how they tried to set her up, how her own mother treated her and how her success has pretty much disconnected her from her family. So it's a pretty tragic tale. And despite all that, she's so kind, so happy, energetic. And I really appreciate that she is that person. Awesome. So now both of us have our dream interview guests. A lot of my, everyone who's listened to the episode has know who my dream guests are, but I would love to hear your dream guests. Zoe. Well, you know, this is kind of random, but I think I just want to hang out with her as Gypsy Rose. I really want to just hang out with Gypsy Rose Blanchard. She's so um, chaotic with her social media posts. And I think it'd be interesting. I also love that um, I think despite her story, a lot of people enjoy her because she's experiencing a lot of the first times, the first time going to the beach, the first time trying this food, first time really living life. And I'm kind of like hyper focused on that part of her because I just love seeing someone experience something new. And I think it's really charming and it makes you put everything in your life put into perspective. So I'd love to interview her. Um, Lindsay Lohan, I feel like the only real interview I've seen of her was like with Oprah when she like wasn't doing that great. And like, I feel like we never really got to talk to like straight edge Lindsay, who's like totally coherent and like unpacking some of her past Hollywood traumas. I think that that day will come, but I think she's kind of in her more like healing, like mom phase, kind of like working on her stability. I also love Trisha Paytas and Julia Fox. I mean, those are people I hope to interview sometime. So speaking of Julia Fox, mm-hmm. she is one of the celebrities along with her own Paris Hilton who follows you on social media. So what was your reaction when you saw Julia Fox follows me, now Paris Hilton follows me? It's so random when I get a verified notification, like Sean Kingston messaged me on Instagram saying, like, hey man, can we talk? It's like, no, I'm not going to talk to you. I just posted a video about you scamming a bunch of people. But, um, you know, having Paris and Julia follow me were my... <laughs> much better cases. I mean, Paris, I covered some of her story with the uh, the teen, the troubled teen industry with those like terribly abusive camps where teens are sent to. And she was a victim of that. She actually made a documentary talking about it. And I covered it as well because I've covered several stories involving the TTI, the troubled teen industry. So she followed me after I made that coverage, which is nice because I know that she's always on social media. So I think she just came across it and enjoyed it and decided to follow me. And as far as Julia Fox, I've always advocated for her as when it comes to my Kanye coverage. Um, Kanye has been a big story on my channel for a long time and someone who is constantly going through different waves. So I think it's fascinating to follow his life. But as far as Julia, I've always been a big fan of hers. And then I know she likes the tea. She likes the blind items. She likes the Hollywood gossip. So it wasn't too surprising, but it was an honor to have both of them follow me. That's amazing. And who knows, maybe you'll get both of them to come on the podcast because you've been very good at your podcast. So you're very good at what you do. Thank you. That's so sweet. And, you know, I always put myself in a box my whole life and I never thought I could do this. And I just feel so um, grateful for everything I do, even coming on to your podcast. Like I little me, I'm like, you're gonna have me on your podcast, but it's, you know, it feels special. And I feel just like happy to be along for the ride. And we're happy that you are that you that you are taking us along the ride and everything. So, I want to ask you before we, I, there's a couple of questions I want to start start to ask before we start riding down this conversation. So, mm-hmm. what has been um, some of the strategies that you and your team use to build your following on YouTube and on Facebook and on Instagram? 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, there's some logistics parts. I mean, SEO, search engine optimization, we will cover stories. You know, back in the day, I used to cover a lot of niche stories and sometimes I will, but we try to cover stories that people are looking up and that people are interested in. I mean, I think also acknowledging your audience, engaging with the audience and letting them know that they are heard and they are valued. If I get a comment on every single video to cover a certain story and I just keep ignoring it, they don't, you know, they don't feel listened to. So I love to give the people what they want. So if they request these videos, they send me a video idea to my email, then I'm so happy to cover it. And I think it just kind of speaks to the community we have here and why we've been consistent and been able to have stable views and engagement because we are listening to them and we're also like equally interested. I mean, so many stories I've covered have been from an email or um, an Instagram message. And I think that it's the best feeling to see, to post a video. And then I see like, you know, 20 comments that are like, oh, I've been asking for this one. or I've been waiting for this one. It just feels good as a creator and to know that my audience is happy. That's, am and that's amazing. That's amazing. So what is next for you? What is your ideal goal? Mm -hmm. So um, right now I'm working on a variety show with another YouTuber. We're not getting into, we're not releasing anything really as far as the title or um, the concept yet, but it's like a variety show and it's going to have a lot of content and a lot of different content. And she's um, another fellow creator who's very similar to my channel. Um, I'm also getting into producing documentaries. I mean, we saw Quiet on Set come about and that was stuff I was heavily involved in. We saw several free Britney documentaries and I was a part of the New York Times. I was part of helping the New York Times with their documentary Framing Britney Spears. Recently, 7M is a documentary or the dance cult documentary about 7M is on Netflix. I got cease and desist letters from them years ago. So I'm starting to realize that when I cover something and I get a little bit in trouble or I get a little bit of backlash, there's probably something there. So I'm going to try to get into the bigger space of creating these documentaries and, um, you know, doing a different kind of coverage and investigative journalism and a little bit um, more artistic in the sense that I'm not going to be, you know, I don't want to be in it. I want to be a producer and to start, you know, sitting at the table with these other people who have been watching me for years, who have been watching my channel garner views on these topics and who see the opportunity and they do it. So I'm just here to do it and ready to, you know, start off running when it comes to it. So. And I cannot wait to see these new projects of yours. You're going to be able to do that. So last question. Are you ready, Sloan? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Okay, Sloan, where can my audience connect with you on social media? And where can they find the Get Into It podcast? So on YouTube, you guys can find me at Sloan Hooks. On Facebook, we're Sloan Hooks. Instagram, Sloan Hooks. And Snapchat, we've got a show called Are You Hooked Yet? And then we've got a wonderful... Um, podcast channel which is titled let's get into it where we post podcasts every week and a bunch of clips and fun things like that so um so much to look forward to on there and you never know who i'm going to interview or what i'm going to uncover next so that channel is very uh it's unpredictable and i love it for that all righty guys have you missed an episode of the jake's take with jacob Elliott podcast visit our channels on amazon music apple podcast spotify spreaker and iheart Jake's Take with Jacob LHR, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and YouTube. Jacob LHR, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And guys, want to know what's going on with America's Got Talent? Who won the latest singer, the mass, latest edition of Mass Singer? And want to know my music reviews and find more interviews? Visit jakes-jake.com. Once again, jakes-jake.com. Sloan, it was an honor and privilege to welcome you to this podcast. You are more than welcome to come back anytime, my friend. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing it. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Good. Bye.